Dear friends, this is Miles Stanford, and I'd like to share a few thoughts with you concerning these important subjects of uh, discouragement and uh, depression that so often defeat the Christian. The Lord has had me in counseling work for the last 22 years, and I'd like to share with you some of the things that I've found as to causes for Christians to be discouraged and depressed, and also some of God's answers to these situations. It seems that in these last few years that more and more believers are coming under these pressures that uh, discourage them and uh, bring them down into dark depression. And there's an answer to it. The Lord has the answer to all of our problems. And we'd like to talk these things over and see if we can't find out for ourselves, for our own particular pressures, what our Father has for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we begin, we might bow our heads for a moment. Our Father, we realize that Thou art the God of the universe. Thou art our own Heavenly Father. Thou dost see us in the Lord Jesus Christ as believers, that we belong to Thee eternally, that since we are in Thy beloved Son, Thou art free to love us. Thou art free to bring us along in our Christian life, along the lines of thy purpose for us, in conforming us to the image of thy Son. So we trust thee now as we talk some of these things over together, that thou wilt make it very clear to each heart uh, what thou art doing in each particular life, and the way thou dost carry these things out and the reason for them, so that there might be new confidence in thee, a new realization of thy methods, a new trust and rest in thee, as we realize and see in thy word, uh, thy will for each one of us, and thy plan for each one of us, that there might be comfort, that there might be peace, that there might be joy that hearts might come out from under these uh, dark pressures that would tend to pull them down. So we thank thee in advance for thy mercy and thy care for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Probably the best thing to do is to, first of all, cover some of the uh, reasons for discouragement and uh, depression. It's true that as you think about these things and listen to the tape, that all of these things will not apply to you, maybe none of them. But even if that should be the case, at least you will have the opportunity of thinking over some of these things uh, on behalf of others, that you may come to know someone else, a friend, a Christian friend in church, or an acquaintance, or someone in your family who is being bothered by uh, depression. That some of these things might help you to realize what's going on in their situation. It might help you to understand more fully what they're going through, and possibly be able to share some things with them that will be a help to them. I think the first place to begin is in the home, to talk over some of the reasons for discouragement and depression in the Christian life, 
that spring from uh, home circumstances. Uh, many uh, dear Christian women have unsaved husbands, and many uh, who are hungry to grow are uh, more or less ahead of their husbands spiritually, those who do have Christian husbands. They are making more progress than he is for one reason or other, and uh, they're burdened because of a lack of fellowship, because of the lack of uh, spiritual leadership in the home from the husband. And there's a discouragement there often because of a lack of progress. Well, sometimes there are definite reasons for this. Uh, often, the Christian mother and wife seeks to push or pull or apply pressures to their husbands if they don't seem to be coming along spiritually like they think they should be. And this, of course, causes the husband to rebel and to draw back and to become often uh, outraged that the the approach and the burden uh, cannot be by means of pressure at all. That's what we must see. That there must be an understanding. There must be, of course, uh, prayer and a quiet uh, concern will cause the husband to uh, open up and to become uh, hungry and uh, eager to grow if he's a Christian or if he's an unsaved husband, uh, the main way for him to become hungry to be saved is to see the Lord Jesus in the life of his wife, his Christian wife. And there just simply cannot be any nagging or any pressure if there is to be any hope for that man to come along spiritually. And the same thing really goes for the children. There are many instances, especially in the teens, where the children have become Christians back in Sunday school at a younger age and uh, come along fairly well. But then in the teens, something seems to often happen. They get into high school, and uh, there's a change in their thinking. And the parents are often very much discouraged about the progress or lack of progress in, in the teenager's life. He loses a lot of interest in church and uh, the things of the Lord. Well, there are reasons for this. These young people have to go through things to find things out about themselves and to prove some of the things that they have been told in Sunday school and at home. And uh, it also should be remembered that it's very rare for a teenager, no matter how good a Christian home, no matter how good a church he's been in, he or she, no matter what the background, uh, it's very rare for a teenager to become really uh, obviously established in the Lord. There is often, yes, a lot of enthusiasm uh, in the different uh, young people's groups and all, uh, but as far as mature, steadfast, a deep spiritual life, it's far too early. It rarely happens in the, in the teens. It takes a lot longer than that. So that parents should realize something of this and be willing to wait until they grow up more fully, until they go through more, until they uh, find out more about themselves and in turn find out more about the Lord Jesus Christ in, in actual everyday life as they seek to establish their own life. So parents really shouldn't be discouraged about teenagers. Even uh, so many of them actually, actually rebel against the Lord seemingly. But they, they'll be all right later on after they find a few things out. And, of course, there are always these instances where 
the children were uh, pushed or forced into a decision, either at church or some uh, so-called evangelistic meetings at church, Sunday school, or in the home by the parents. And too much taken for granted. And they did something because they were more or less told to about the Lord. Well, uh, this is going to be found out, all right, during the teens. And there must be some uh, careful... Uh, uh, looking into these things and uh, to make sure just where these children stand with the Lord. What they need is a careful cultivation and to realize that their parents are concerned about them. They need to see something of uh, the reality of the Lord in their parents' lives so that uh, they can be helped Even when uh, many of these teens go away to college, sometimes they go away to secular college and they come back uh, quite bitter about the old beliefs and all. Well, then, then is when they need uh, understanding and love and concern more than ever. Because uh, their heart hungers and their needs will overcome this shock that they've encountered at college. And then is when they need an understanding parent and a parent who is ready to assist and to share the things of the Lord. So there's no real need for discouragement and uh, allowing these things to uh, pull you down about the children and all. Because in time, they'll, they'll straighten out. What they need is parents who do not become all upset about them, parents who understand something of what they're going through and are able to rest in the Lord and wait upon the Lord and uh, trust the Lord about the situation. They, they, they need The children need that stability. They need to see that in their parents. And they will uh, turn to them in their own time. And another thing concerning home life that bothers many mothers and wives is the fact that they're so tied up with the home, all that that involves, that they feel that they have a little or no opportunity to serve the Lord. That possibly the husband's a Christian and he's active in church and he's... Uh, gone evening after evening and he seems to have a ministry of his own and it causes the mother to feel bad often that she is uh, simply tied to the sink and to the washing machine and the uh, washer and dryer and the ironing board and all the responsibilities that have to do with uh, running a Christian home. But what so many forget is that that is a, one of the finest ministries of all. And one of, surely one of the most vital ministries of all is to realize that that is service that no one else can do, that is service that is highly honored of the Lord, and that is service that certainly takes all of the spiritual growth that one can possibly receive from the Lord. I, I don't think there's any ministry at all in the world like a, a Christian mother in a Christian home with children and a husband to take care of. There, there's just nothing that's more important. Our great lack today is uh, the Christian home. Our churches are becoming weaker and weaker. Uh, these tremendous problems that are happening throughout Christendom are all, all spring from a weak Christian home. If we had uh, stronger Christian homes, uh, the churches and all of the ministries would in turn be affected. Uh, the foundation is uh, crumbling. That's the, that's the real problem today. And it all goes back basically to the condition of the, the spiritual condition of the Christian mother. Besides, uh, when a mother and the father too are faithful in their home ministries, and seek uh, growth from the Lord that is required to carry that ministry out. The children are going to uh, grow up someday, 
and they're going to go away to college, they're going to be married, and then uh, all that the parents have been through has been preparing them for the, the new freedom that comes, and uh, there so often is the opportunity for an individual ministry or a ministry of a husband and wife, where they're free to uh, get out of the home, more or less, and to reach out. And for a, a really effective ministry, reaching out to others, it takes it takes all that time for the, the development and preparation. It takes uh, 20 and 30 years. So that if the <clears throat> work at hand, the drudgery, the slow days, weeks, and months, and years that just seem to slowly crawl by, if there is faithfulness there to the work at hand, that faithfulness uh, results in uh, heart preparation. It results in uh, a training and an understanding of people, people's problems, that prepare one thoroughly and deeply for a wonderful Christian ministry of reaching out to others in any uh, means or form that the Lord may have for the individual or the couple. And it takes that much time. So the best thing to do is to settle down and not be discouraged about uh, the slowness of it all and the seeming futility of it all, not to be uh, allow this to press down upon one, because it's a very important time, very valuable time, nothing to be discouraged about at all. <clears throat> And then uh, there's another feature here about family life and all that often uh, causes trouble, where the parents will pray for each other or they pray for the children. There may be a lack of growth there or problems, and uh, often a parent will pray and uh, seek to um, force the Lord into a corner about this situation and uh, force some promise out of the Lord as to the fact that this whole situation and this life that one is praying for will turn out to be just what we want it to be. And uh, often the individual will depend upon this this um, so-called promise for many years and uh, then when it seems like the Lord isn't carrying out his end of the promise and that the individual isn't turning out too well, there's a tremendous amount of frustration in the life that uh, maybe God isn't going to do his part here. Well, it's necessary, of course, to pray for our loved ones and it's necessary to trust the Lord about them. But this, uh, this thought of uh, seeking to apply pressure on the Lord, the best thing to do is to remember that he is our sovereign father that he has our best interest in view he has the best interest of our entire family in view and that he knows how to work these things out and he often works them out just the opposite of the way we would but he arrives at his ends and he he's far more honored and he's far more trusted by our uh, giving him the credit for knowing what he's doing and to rest in him and to uh, depend upon him quietly through the years as he carries out his work in the lives of our family and our loved ones and our friends. The attitude is so important because if we're upset about God and the way he seems to be doing things, there's going to be discouragement, there's going to be depression. Those are the natural results of lack of faith, the natural results of fretting and worrying and, and uh, Worry, uh, as far as God is concerned, worry slanders every promise in the Word of God. Worry is, a, is an awful sin. Fretting is a terrible sin. It's simply a lack of faith, lack of trust. Well, another aspect of our life that has to do closely is closely related to the home, and that's the church life. And it seems that in uh, recent years, many, many Christians, they, they don't like to admit it, and many of them won't admit it, but many, many Christians have come to the place where they're just sick and tired of church life. 
that uh, the weekend is the hardest time of the week. That uh, they'd hate to say it, but Sunday is the day that uh, they just can hardly face up to. And there are many, many in this situation, and there are many good reasons for it. Uh, many it must be, be admitted that many of our churches uh, are practically not worth attending these days. Sound fundamental churches, where uh, there's a Christian who has needs in his life and is hungry to grow, yearning for to get to know the Lord better, and uh, all that they receive from the ministry more or less is uh, evangelistic messages day and night, and exhortation to uh, give and get busy for the Lord and all of these uh, things and there's little or no food given it must be admitted that that's true and all uh, because there's uh, so little food given uh, there's little growth in the church and there's naturally going to be a lot of terrible problems full of problems church problems well uh, here's what must be remembered for the Christian who is upset about this and who is going through a lot of agony of soul about this matter. And that is that actually the church, basically the church is a place of ministry. It's a place for you to serve and uh, not necessarily a place where you go to get, but a place where you go to give. True, uh, a good, sound, fundamental church, uh, you go and attend year in, year out, and you're going to receive much uh, truth of the word, and you're going to get a foundation, and you're going to get uh, much help. But when it comes to the deeper truths and the truths that matter for Christian stability and growth, you're pretty much on your own. You must uh, dig into the word. You must uh, get help from uh, spiritual books. And uh, it's, it, it should be more of a personal thing between you and the Lord. And not just be able to sit there in a pew and uh, receive what you need uh, 45 minutes or an hour and a half a week. That's not the type of thing at all anyway. That it's uh, the daily, momentarily communion with the Father and uh, coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ through digging into the Word and uh, study and prayer and fellowship with Him. And then uh, you'll find that the church turns out to be a mission field. The church turns out to be a wonderful place of opportunity to share. And, of course, then uh, the, the old frustration disappears overnight. That you find that the place, uh, the church is a place of growth uh, where you learn by doing. And the wonderful opportunity to share with other hungry hearts that you find there, you carefully share. So that uh, it's admitted, it's true, that there are some terrible problems in our churches and that uh, there's very little comfort there often. But when one looks at it in the other direction, that in my personal home life is a place for me to grow and that my church life is a ministry, that can make all the difference. That as you grow, you share. Well, this matter of growth, here's another area of terrible discouragement for Christians, and many Christians are born down in deep, dark depression over their spiritual growth or lack of it. And main, the main reason is that uh, so many don't understand how God goes about this. The fact that um, the way up is down, the fact that uh, spiritual life springs out of death, many Christians don't realize this. And they're terribly frustrated and uh, discouraged about it all because they're looking in the wrong direction. What uh, Christians need to realize is that if they're hungry to grow and they long to be more and more like the Lord Jesus, that uh, that's, uh, that's God's very purpose for them, that that hunger was placed in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's right from the heart of God. That they're hungering for the same things that God is hungering for that their hearts and minds are in the same direction, uh, moving in the same direction as his, that they're moving right along the lines of God's purpose, eternal purpose for them. But the thing is that in order for us to grow spiritually, God takes us through things that we find out about the sin in our life, we find out about self. 
and he takes us down to show us what we're like so that uh, we don't seek to live the Christian life. We come to find out through Romans 7 experiences that uh, we can't live the Christian life even though we're Christians. That's what God has to teach us first and that he teaches us that through failure. Failure in our home, failure in our relationship to our husband or wife, failure in our relationship with our children and our neighbors and our uh, church friends, <clears throat> failure everywhere. We're being taken down and uh, we're made to realize what self is like. So that in turn, we slowly come to depend upon the Lord Jesus to live his life through us. And not I but Christ, not I but Christ's life. And all of these things uh, are uh, worked in our lives by God. And we come to find out that uh, the self never, never improves. The old life never improves. But that um, we uh, learn to concentrate on the Lord Jesus and abide in Him, and that the old life is exchanged and replaced by the new life, the life of the Lord Jesus Himself. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, so many Christians, naturally, they, they want to be something. They want to be a good, strong Christian. They want to have a tremendous testimony, and uh, they try to uh, develop themselves. They try to be something for the Lord. Well, and they pray to God to make them uh, a good Christian. <clears throat> well, God, uh, in answering that prayer, he goes about by uh, taking us down because his son is our Christian life. And for, in order for the Lord Jesus to be everything in his life, we must be nothing. And we must want it that way. And we must come to love to have him manifested and have him be everything because uh, he's our new life. Our Christian life is centered in him. And that we begin to hate our old life and uh, all the love we have is for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I think of a, uh, a little poem by um, Max Reich. He used to be a teacher at Moody Bible Institute where he gives a good principle here about this Christian growth and about our attitude. Oh, friends, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be nothing as a Christian, just to be nothing, to uh, depend upon the Lord to give you that attitude that you can hide in Him and uh, not have people make over you, but just to hide in Him and to be nothing, that, uh, that people uh, praise the Lord, that people uh, are more interested in Him, that people are uh, blessed by seeing Him. There's where the frustrations go. There's where the dis discouragement and depression go. When we just simply let him be himself in us. And that's what he's working at day and night. That's what he's seeking to do, is to uh, manifest himself in and through us. And Max Reich wrote this little bit of poetry. He says, Keep in the dust, so shalt thou see what grace God will bestow on thee. Wouldst thou avoid the tempter's dart, then never from the dust depart. Those in the dust will never fall. It is the safest place of all. The penitent in dust shall find how God keeps peaceful heart and mind. Their restlessness is sweetly hushed in those whose home is in the dust. And from the dust they will arise to live with Christ in paradise. Well, that, that's a hard thing for Christians to see at first, that the place that God can honor us, the place that God can use us, the place from which uh, the Lord Jesus can manifest himself is when we're uh, hiding in him and uh, keeping low, keeping out of the picture. That's the secret, of course, for uh, joy in the Lord and for peace, the peace of God is that the Lord Jesus is free to uh, be everything. He can be our all in all. Well, this attitude is, is an attitude we receive from the Holy Spirit because uh, this is uh, God's plan for us. Not I, but Christ. 
so that uh, when we come to feel this way, we can be sure that uh, this is God's will for us and that we're uh, cooperating with God as he works uh, through our daily circumstances and uh, situations to bring us down, to crucify the self-life and to hold it in the place of death, to make it uh, as nothing, so that we're able to rest in the Lord Jesus and uh, concentrate on him and enjoy him and fellowship with him. The greatest heart burden in the growing Christ of the of the growing Christian is the fact that his day is filled uh, partly with self and partly with Christ. And uh, the more he seeks to grow, the more self gets in the way, and uh, he's just uh, wretched, oh wretched man that I am. That uh, self seems to be spoiling everything. While God uh, will deal with self as we allow him to as we choose against self and choose in favor of the Lord Jesus. He will apply the, apply the cross and uh, he will show us the truth in the word as to what he's already done about self as we learn about the identification truths. The fact that God has already crucified the old nature back at Calvary and he's recreated us anew in Christ who is now our life. Well, the church life. A place to serve and not necessarily to just go and uh, seek to receive. And then um, another matter about uh, our Christian growth, and that is that um, so many Christians uh, look over into Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and uh, see uh, the Christian life as it's set forth there and then they look into their own hearts and their own daily life and say to themselves, my, uh, I'm a far cry from uh, what the Lord is uh, setting forth here. And they become uh, discouraged about uh, their progress. And discouragement if uh, continued, it always leads to depression. And what we need to realize is uh, one thing, that the principle of time, how long it takes for Christian growth to set in and become mature. And many Christians are uh, actually way back uh, near their birth, near their beginning, and then they get to studying in Ephesians and Colossians and all, and uh, they're 20 years ahead of themselves. That God brings a Christian to those areas in time, <clears throat> and there's a long ways to go. And that there's no need to be discouraged about the fact that we aren't there yet. Uh, the need is to realize that uh, what is required for God to bring us there how much time it takes, and all that he must take us through, so that we must um, adjust our thinking to God's thinking, and to realize, well, now the Lord is going to have to bring me here to these wonderful realms of Ephesians and Colossians and Philippians and all, and that it's going to take time. And all the things that he's taking me through now, including my everyday failure, are the very things that are going to bring me into this wonderful life of not I but Christ. Now, another uh, cause of frustration and discouragement is uh, this matter of being in your sound fundamentalist church and the uh, routine that so many follow of having uh, an evangelist in once or twice a year, a year uh, special meetings, or having a so-called deeper life speaker in uh, once a year. And these folk uh, so often come in and uh, apply pressure to the members of the church. They either apply pressure that they uh, get right with the Lord and uh, that they confess a lot of things, <clears throat> that they get busy for the Lord and get out in the neighborhood and start inviting folks in. And all of these... Uh, 
things that they apply to hearts uh, that are not ready to receive that application. And they seek to uh, get accomplished in the week that they're there what may take ten years to for the Lord to accomplish. And so there's a tremendous amount of uh, frustration and discouragement that arises from these special meetings. And if uh, our dear pastors realized more this time element and uh, the food that's required for growth, feeding upon the Lord Jesus Christ himself, they wouldn't be so uh, ready and uh, feel that there's such a need to have some stranger come in and to more or less work their people over for a week or so and then leave and uh, leave all the frustrations and uh, upsets behind them. And all of the testimonies that were wrung out of people uh, that uh, soon fade. All of that uh, discouragement that springs from all that. All this routine of having these special meetings. And this has caused an awful lot of trouble amongst our Christians, and this has caused an awful lot of heartache about everyday church life. That many, many uh, true-hearted Christians uh, just simply condemn uh, the special and it's in heart, and many refuse to attend, uh, refuse to cooperate. And all that Christians are put through, when uh, much more could be accomplished by a year in, year out feeding of the individuals, feeding, a careful feeding, and a careful understanding of what is required for Christian growth. It's not a, a matter of pushing and forcing or tricking uh, the individual in, into some sort of commitment at all. But the steady diet of feeding upon the Lord Jesus Christ in the Word. Uh, month in, month out, year in, year out. Will accomplish far more than uh, the best of uh, special meetings. Another thing about uh, Christian growth is that uh, many Christians are so aware of their needs at present and so uh, discouraged about uh, their lack of progress that they forget that uh, God doesn't uh, go by what is now. God has plans uh, that are far out ahead and God is making progress constantly and that we mustn't judge our present. We mustn't judge the future by our present. That we must uh, realize that God is working and that uh, things will be different in a few months and things will be different next year and there'll be progress but as uh, the Christian sits down and looks at his life right now he just doesn't see any hope he doesn't uh, have any hope for progress but he's forgetting that God is way out there ahead and God is working another problem that we encounter that is a terrible source of uh, depression is this matter of uh, shortcut that there are those that you may be acquainted with who promise all sorts of blessings and uh, experiences that will change your Christian life overnight this matter of uh, a baptism of the spirit or uh, learning to speak in tongues and all of these things that uh, there are tremendous promises uh, presented that uh, all your spiritual problems can be solved overnight and should be by uh, entering into some of these experiences that are offered. Well, it's important to realize that there is no shortcut in the Christian life and Christian development and that um, Many of these claims made by these folks, most of them are false. And uh, these experiences that they present and tell you about uh, never last. They're always on the go for new experiences. And in those realms, in this experiential realm that these people live in, uh, you never hear about it, but... Uh, if you find out about these people, you realize that they are the ones who are really the victims of uh, terrible discouragement and terrible, deep, dark depression. Because they get all built up and get all excited and enthused about some experience 
uh, they've experienced in the flesh, experience that uh, is in the realm of emotions. And then uh, it isn't too long before these experiences fade away and they have nothing. And uh, terrible depression sets in. And then they have to struggle to uh, get into a new experience and to go through the whole thing again. And they never, never become established. They never become established in the Word. They never become established in the Lord. And they're constantly on the go. And the churches that they attend usually have meetings almost every night of the week. And uh, that's a necessity because they have to keep these people going on this basis. And they have their constant altar calls where these poor, dear, victimized people are constantly going down to the altar to get straightened out with God and to uh, get going again. And there's no stability, there's no maturity. And it's a terrible trap to get into. I, I've written a, a book on this. It's called The Red Letters. I'd like to have you uh, send for it if you're interested in these things and uh, want to realize what this error is. You, uh, I have this book. You can write to me. I'll give you my address and all at the end of the tape. And there's another book that's uh, very important on this subject. You may know about it by James H. McConkie called The Threefold Spirit, Secret of the Holy Spirit. The Threefold Secret of the Holy Spirit. That can be gotten, it's a cold portage book, can be gotten at your bookstore, a moody cold portage, and I think you can get it from Dr. Epp. McConkie, Threefold Secret of the Holy Spirit. And another fine book on this subject of uh, that has to do with these experiences and uh, baptism of the Spirit and all these errors is uh, Holiness True and False by Ironside. Holiness True and False by Harry Ironside. And that can be gotten at your local bookstore, I'm sure, your Christian bookstore. And these are paperback books, all of them, that uh, are important for every Christian to study to keep away from this realm of these uh, tongues and healing experiences that are uh, mainly uh, neurotic things and uh, sure sources of the deepest depression. Well, we won't say too much more about that, but uh, if you can get one or all of these paperback books, you will uh, gain much information about these things and God's answer to them. Now, another realm of discouragement, of course, for many Christians, is in the matter of their service. Uh, many dear housewives uh, give a lot of their time at church and uh, have worked for years, been one of the workers. Each church has just so many people who... Uh, the handful who does all the work and uh, of course mainly the rest just ride along get the benefit of it all but you might be one of these uh, workers and you feel that you're unappreciated well that's part of your Christian development the, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul uh, was not appreciated by those to whom he ministered he said the more I love you the less I be loved and that's just part of uh, our development that we depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ and we're not really basically uh, doing all this service uh, for others is basically for his glory true it's for others but uh, we're depending upon him we're resting in him it's all for his glory the holy spirit works through the christian worker that the lord jesus might be glorified and uh, if our motives are right and we realize these things uh, we won't be discouraged when uh, people don't appreciate all the work and then there's another realm in uh, Christian service uh, having to do with personal work and all that uh, after a time we come to realize that uh, we're not so effective as we thought we were. That we, uh, many of the folk that we win to the Lord and all uh, don't seem to turn out so well. And at first we blame them and uh, we don't realize that basically it's our it's it's uh, our fault that uh, the Lord is seeking to show us that we must uh, be developed deeper spiritually. We must uh, be trained better and uh, learn more of Him and learn more to how to share Him. 
and learn and understand more uh, the, the true condition of a lost and what it takes to win a soul. And who must do it? And then, of course, there's the realm of uh, working with uh, Christians and seeking to help them grow. That here, too, so much time is required and so much prayer and uh, careful handling and learning uh, the different aspects of literature uh, which the way that we can use to share with the hearts that we want to see grow. When to share it and how to share it. Which book and which track to share with them when. And we learn our material. Well, how do we learn this? Well, we learn this in our own personal growth. If we understand how uh, something of how we grow, we're going to understand something of how others are going to grow and what is it, what's required, how to go about it. So uh, the Lord allows uh, failures and he allows pressures to build up in our service, uh, not to discourage us, but to uh, help us to see what we need that we need more growth, to turn us back to himself, and that we depend more fully upon him and come to know him better, so that we become more usable instruments than we were before. God is causing the failure so that we'll grow. Our Father is causing these things to take us deeper and not let us get along uh, on the easy path that we started out on but that he, he uh, causes things to be more difficult so that we'll see that uh, it has to be not I but Christ. I was talking to a dear brother recently, an evangelist. He was saying how discouraged he gets uh, these days that uh, he's seeking for revival in the churches he goes to and... Uh, he says, once in a while, God awakens things and uh, things happen. He says, but for the most part, nothing happens at all. And he's been terribly discouraged. And we had a, a little talk about these church revivals and uh, even the ones that seem like revival uh, rarely amount to much of anything. And I was suggesting to him that possibly the Lord was helping him to realize that the best avenue of progress is to watch for the individual and the small groups of hungry hearts and to uh, help them develop, help the weaker Christians grow, and the result of that growth will be more fruit than uh, the revivals that he's been hoping for and depending upon. Established Christians, a few here and a few there, will in turn amount to more fruit than uh, going about trying to uh, work up revival here and there. And that may be happening in your life, that God is showing you that reality in the lives of others must come through reality in your own life, in your own development. Well, Another uh, source of uh, frustration and discouragement is that uh, Christians um, hear about Hudson Taylor and D.L. Moody and George Muller, and they read these wonderful biographies, and they get discouraged because um, their life isn't like that. Well, th uh, these biographies are very important. Um, they teach us how God brings a soul along. We can find out much by them. And there's much encouragement in them, too. But what we must remember in reading these wonderful biographies is this, that it isn't every Christian who has a book written about him, and it isn't every Christian who has a well-known biography or autobiography, that these individuals that we read about are one in a million, and that God chose to make them that type of leader for specific reasons, but he doesn't make all Christians uh, world-beating uh, leaders. His purpose for all Christians is that we might be conformed to the image of his Son, true. But 
that doesn't mean that we're all in a place of leadership. Some, most, are hidden away where God gets all the glory and uh, that we get none of it. That we're hidden. God loves to uh, bring to naught the things that are by the things that aren't. And uh, the real blessed place is to be in the place where we just aren't. That we're nothing. And we don't all have to be a Hudson Taylor or a Moody or a Muller at all. And we shouldn't be discouraged because we're not. The healthy thing is to hunger for all that God wants for each one of us. God has a plan for each one of our lives. And he has that plan all worked out. And he's completed that plan in the Lord Jesus because the Lord Jesus is our life. And as we look to him and simply trust our Father that he knows what he's doing in our life, in our instance, and that he's concerned about us, then we can rest in, in his faithfulness. And then there's no frustration. There's no worry. There's no uh, depression. Because uh, as we look to him and depend upon him, he's well able to carry out his purpose for us. And for the most part, in the most in most instances, in nine hundred thousand out of a million, he he's going to carry out his wonderful eternal purpose in our lives by making us nothing and keeping us uh, more or less out of the picture. Actually, uh, fame and notoriety and all in the Christian life is always dangerous always uh, makes a Christian life much harder to live and uh, Christian service much harder the, to be effective under those conditions. And it's very, very few individuals that God lifts up in that way. And many, many who are lifted up in that way uh, get into a, a, an awful lot of trouble because they don't continue relying upon God and they don't allow God to carry things through. And... Uh, it's not a safe place to be. It's not worth it at all. And anyone that God takes up in that way, they need special grace. And uh, it's it's much better and much healthier to be one of the ones who keeps in the dust and who keeps out of the way quietly and uh, uh, concentrates upon fellowship with the Lord Jesus, concentrates upon allowing Him to develop us spiritually, and out of that attitude and out of, out of all of that day by day there's going to be growth and there's going to be a ministry. That that life that is developed in the Christian in the, in the Christian's heart is going to flow out to others in one way or another. There's going to be healthy progress and there's going to be fruit. Well... Here's a, here's a realm that's very important. And that is that, uh, you see, the more a Christian grows, the more difficult, uh, more difficulty he has with himself in the self-life, the more difficulty he has with his relationship with others because God is uh, taking him through things that uh, cause failure and to show him that he's weak, show him his weaknesses. And uh, all of this needs to be... Uh, brought home to the Christian before he finds out that in his weakness the Lord Jesus' strength is made perfect. Uh, it's as we're nothing that he becomes everything. So that uh, all during this difficult process of being taken through these things uh, in our Christian walk, it's hard for the Christian to remember and hard for him to realize that God is for him in all this. God is not against him. God is for him. And... Um, we might uh, look at the word a bit here uh, on this subject of God being for us. That uh, the word chastening here in uh, Hebrews 12.10, you might turn to Hebrews 12.
the word uh, for they verily speaking of our fathers in the flesh for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure and the word chastening means child training uh, but God chastens us for a child trains us for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness and now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby wherefore lift up the hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled well we don't live unto ourselves do we friends we live unto the Lord and of course we live unto others uh, we affect others one way or another, many others in our daily lives. So that when we realize that the things that God takes us through to develop our Christian life, hard as they may be, that it's all a part of his child training, and that at the time, while we're in the situation or going through the trial, no, it's not uh, a joyous time, it's very difficult and it's grievous. But that in that experience, where God says in uh, Thessalonians, in everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the uh, will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That we can thank God for his child training because we realize why he's doing it. Less of self and more of Christ. To carry out his purpose in our lives, to prepare us and develop, to develop us so that he can use us effectively. So that we can rejoice uh, in him not in our circumstances but in him our life is hid with Christ in God uh, so many feel well if I'm a Christian and if God's going to bless me nothing's going to happen I mean it's going to be difficult everything's going to be uh, perfect no and uh, many Christians feel that well if things are difficult and God is chastening us that uh, he's, uh, he's mad at us and that he doesn't love us and that he's uh, punishing us for something well, even when God has to punish us for our sin, it's all in the realm of uh, child training. It's all in the realm of love. It's all used to bring us around to grow in him. There's no wrath involved whatsoever. The Lord Jesus bore the wrath, God's wrath for sin on, on, on Calvary. All been born in him. That God uh, does not look at us in wrath any longer at all. He looks at us in love because we're in his son. And all of his dealings with us are in love. All things work together for good to them who love God, for good, to them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknow, foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, and that's God's purpose for us. And that's what all things are working together for in our lives. Our failure to show us self, that we might turn from self to Christ, and when there is success, that the Lord Jesus gets the glory. We know who did it. The, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ did it. We didn't do it. He used us, but he's the one who did it. God bringeth forth the increase, not us. So that uh, during the trial, it may be grievous, but afterward, that trial God is taking us into is, is to develop us in Christ so that afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And we think of Romans 8.28 where God says that all things work together. Some things that he may take us through now, uh, he may have to work something out 20 years from now and work it together with this instance that's going on now and piece it together in his own overall pattern to bring about the good. Or something that may have happened to us 20 years ago that he's working out something else today, that he'll work together with that to produce righteousness in us, the righteousness of Christ. So that we can't look at any one thing and judge it. Uh, we have to realize that God has everything geared, that everything is working together for good. And it's very important to remember that God has the entire universe in his hands, 
and that he has everything fitted together. All of his uh, plan of his is uh, centered in the Lord Jesus and he has us recreated in him and that nothing gets out of gear with God and that he is able to bring about his purposes for us because he's already completed that purpose in, in his son on our behalf. We haven't only been born in the Lord Jesus, but we live in him. Our life is complete in him. Well, that gives peace, that gives rest, no matter what he's taking us through. And uh, much of God's development is, is uh, through our purposely getting into trouble, through our uh, hard-headedness and stubbornness where we'll get into sin and we'll turn against God in, in different instances in our self-will. God allows that. God lets us find out. Uh, often uh, you speak to one of your children that they they a stubborn streak and you just uh, you tell them, all right, I'll just have to let you find out. You'll find out. It may take him years to find out too. But if he finds out, he's all the better than as if you uh, simply told him. And it's the same way God deals with us in the same way. He, he knows our makeup. He knows what we're like. And he understands us and he cares about us. And he knows how to uh, bring us around. So that um, in the midst of all this processing of our daily growth, he says to lift up our hands which are hanging down in discouragement and the feeble knees and uh, to realize that God is taking us along his purpose and he said, make straight paths for your feet. Follow on to know the Lord. And especially, lest that which is lame is turned out of the way, especially since those weaker Christians and the unsaved about us, uh, neighbors and all in our family are watching us. And if we're down all the time and not realizing what God is doing, what a testimony, what a lack of testimony. It hurts other lives, it's very harmful. Lest the lame be turned out of the way. Follow peace with all men, and look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And many Christians, who, when they don't realize what God is doing, to become very bitter. And many uh, Christians are blaming their parents, their Christian parents, or they're blaming their pastor, or they're blaming uh, someone else because they don't realize how God is dealing with them. And some are even blaming God. When all the time uh, God never meant harm to any, any Christian. He may, ha he may have to hurt us, but he'll never harm us. He may have to take us through things that are very difficult, but all of it is in love. All of it is geared to his wonderful eternal purpose. And there's peace there to realize that. There's no discouragement there. There's no cause for depression there in the hands of our loving Father, working all things together for our good. Well, it, it's important to realize that God has his plan all worked out in his Son for us. And as we look to the Lord Jesus, turn our eyes from self to him in confidence in him that uh, we'll become encouraged. There'll be a lightness and a, a joy there, the joy of the Lord. And discouragement will fade away overnight. Depression will fade away overnight. It's just that we've been watching ourselves and not understanding uh, the sun. Well, now we, we better stop on this side and we'll continue a few thoughts on the other side of the tape. <laughs>